was like, I need help. And Allie and I had talked about doing something together. We had just never really landed on what that might look like. And I was like, we'll learn to crochet. <laughs> In today's episode, I'm happy to meet Lindsay and Ali. Two sisters who decided to work together and created the well-known crochet pattern business, Mama Made Minis. We talked about their stories, what it's like to work with a family member, and their first book coming out very soon. If you are listening to this episode on Spotify, don't forget that you can also have access to the video and pictures on YouTube. The link is in the description. Hi, Lindsay and Ali. Welcome on the Crochet Podcast. Thank you so much for being in here today. How are you doing? Good. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thanks. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Doing great. Thank you. As a Monday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So um, before we start, can you please introduce yourself? Because I don't know who, in, who is Lindsay. I don't know who is Ellie. So can you please introduce yourself? Sure. Go ahead. Okay. I'm Allie. And I'm Ali. Lindsay. Oh, okay. Perfect. Now we know. And we're sisters. If you didn't know, oh. I think I think a lot of our community knows that. But um, But yeah, we're sisters. So I mean, I can see. I can see that you're a sister. Yeah. <laughs> So thank you so much. Can can you tell me more a little bit about Mama Made Minis? Uh, how did he start? And you know everything, sure. the story. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we we started. I started Mama Made Minis um, just sort of myself as like a hobby thing five years ago. Um, okay. After I taught myself to crochet six years ago, I guess I taught myself like a little over a year before I started. And um, I had recently had my kids and was looking just for a bit of creative outlet. Um, and it also recently moved across the country from Philadelphia to Colorado, which is where Allie lives. And now, you know, we, okay. live, we at the time we lived two blocks away. Now we live 10 minutes away, but still. Um, <laughs> and I was home with my girls um, after having been in a corporate setting and just sort of looking for a bit more of that creative and um, just an outlet from motherhood on its own and started doing mama made minis and was like, well, a lot of people liked what I was making and maybe I'll try to sell this. And pretty quickly it caught enough um, like excitement or I was like, I need help. And Allie and I had talked about doing something together. We had just never really landed on what that might look like. And I was like, We'll learn to crochet. <laughs> so, and from the start, like what Lindsay had been creating and putting out there was her own patterns. Like it had been really important. Okay. To her. You know, she she taught learn learn to crochet using patterns and stuff, obviously, mm -hmm. and YouTube. But you like right away like picked up yeah. like the excitement and the skill of like actually designing her own things. Okay. And yeah. she made minis was always like based on your own original designs and right. patterns. Which when I decided to start it as like a shop, um, I had gone back and forth and I said it okay when it was time to start a shop I was like I want to just make my own designs and sell those mm -hmm. so I wasn't okay. making people's patterns to sell the finished goods I was designing pieces and um and had a few like exciting successes and and got some traction quickly where I was sort of like hey I think this is more than just a fun thing do you want to join in we've talked about like let's doing a business Ali had also um been at that time staying at home with her girls after coming from um, a creative marketing background. So we both okay. had been like in the workplace and then were home with our kids when they were little and sort of were like, I think we could make this like a real thing. Totally. And um, yeah. we had also, we both grew up knitting. Our grandmother taught us to knit. And okay. she always talked about learning to crochet and never had. And we had each tried over the years and to learn to crochet clicked. and it like just never clicked. But okay. yeah. And, but Yeah. And so my like drive to learn to crochet was I was like set on having to make an amigurami like I wanted to make a, a toy for one of my my third born was like six months or something at the time or it might have been actually right before she was born I was like obsessed with the idea of making an, an animal for her but I was like I only know how to knit and I just didn't love the way like a knit toy looked it was all the patterns I saw that I loved were crochet mm -hmm. okay. and it just had never clicked for me but I was like going on YouTube <laughs> gonna watch out how to do this 
it was very odd at first, the feeling of like going to like the single hook versus like just being used to knitting. Mm -hmm. Um, Honestly, we'd knit since we were little girls, but I could probably say up until that time, I'd maybe finished one or two <laughs> projects. Yeah. Like most of the things I'd started yeah, to knit, I never really finished it. I, made, I knit a couple hats, um, smaller things like that, but I never really stuck through and finished projects. Right. Mm-hmm. And then learned to crochet, like I said, like using YouTube. And I was like, I have to do this. And then it clicked. And I was like, oh, okay. That's my thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm like, sure. okay. Like, and then from there, it really just became like an obsession. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes like one day can change everything and you're like, totally. okay, that's what I'm going to do. Totally. <laughs> that whole like, why well, do you only have one hook? Why is the stitch always live? Like we, it was a difference in knitting, but then sure. it's like, I say sometimes we also both have, um, uh, bachelor of fine arts so we have artistic backgrounds like we okay. study art in college um so we have that like creative sort of background and like blood running through us but when it clicked in crochet I was like it felt like my brain started to like draw in crochet mm-hmm. almost and I was like mm-hmm. oh oh I, I get like I can make that like I can create three-dimensional things so yes yes yeah I think that that the medium you know when you are already artistic it really <laughs> helps to, yeah, uh, sure. to be able to create well that's the thing like when like when she, we're like discussing a new designer a new animal like she always starts with like a sketch you know like she's like this is okay. what i want it to look like i you know yeah. like and it's yeah and then building it out in crochet yeah. from there but and three-dimensional so- art was always like the more exciting for me like ali um majored in and studied photography mm-hmm. i studied okay. jewelry and fabric design so i was always I always like hated like drawing class, but loved things that I could make with my hands and was like, felt like at the end you had an object and like something from your art. Um, yes. So I think that's where like it. It's goes. funny how you, you can <laughs> yeah. like mix all the skills that you both have, you know, to yeah. create an amazing business because Ali, you say you also did marketing, right? Mm-hmm. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Does he help today for, for your business, you think? For sure. Yeah. So like I, I actually worked for a brewery in the marketing, you know, and, and I got okay. to be more creative there, you know, than you might assume at a brewery, but that yeah. definitely helps in the business side of things. Totally. And like the digital, any of the digital design pieces mm-hmm. and like yes. our website and the, you know, that side of it, she's like, yeah, I got it. Like she gets that and figures that out. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's, it, we work well as a team because we have a lot of similar strengths, mm-hmm. but we also yeah. balance out where, you know, I have a tendency to get hyper creative mm-hmm. and off in la la land. And Allie's kind of like, come back down here. I always see like, she takes us thing. into the clouds. So it's like, we like dream big. And I'm like, that's cool, but we're going to have to keep our feet on the ground if it's going to happen. So she has to that's be like, good. That's that, good to have this balance. For sure. Totally. The balance is great. But, but we also can like both like, anything we come up with, like, we're going to do it. We can make that happen. What, yeah. like, whatever the idea is, n- neither one of us ever thinks like, I don't know. I don't know if we could do that. It's yeah. like, we're both like, yeah, we can do that. We can make that happen. So yeah. are you both designing and writing patterns or one of you write patterns or one design or you just mix everything? Um, mostly, most of the pattern design and writing I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, And so that's, again, where our balance sort of comes in. Uh, We do a lot of the creative brainstorming together and the vision for, you know, what's next? What what do we want to see in our collection next? Mm -hmm. Uh, Is it more animals within? Like right now, majority of our patterns um, are Migurami loveys. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times we're talking about like, you know, Allie will fill me in like, everyone's asking for this. You know, she gets a lot of requests via Etsy and our emails and stuff like, you know, so she'll say what. Yeah. Like was like Lindsay handles the, all the Instagram side of things too. So she gets a lot of the input from that side, you know, from that community. Okay. And I'm, I handle um, Etsy and email and all the like customer input coming in from that way. So then, yeah, we sit together totally to talk about like, all right, this is what we should work on next. or this is the next pattern we want to have. Um, okay. Totally. And then it kind of comes like a balance of that, of like, what are our customers asking for? Mm -hmm. What is on trend? And then what are we honestly like, exactly. I'm like, but I'm not feeling passionate about that. So like, I really want to make this. And a lot of times, you know, has to be the balance of she's like, okay, but people really want this, like design the pattern. 
And sometimes I'm like, I have this crazy idea. Let's try it and see if people like it. And, you know, so um, we bounce off each other creatively that way. But a lot of the actual like crochet design mm -hmm. is sort of my piece of things. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. And so you do you have an office or you just work at one of your house? Um, currently, we work from our homes. Mm -hmm. um, okay. We are working on, I, I moved within the last year and have like an external building at my current home that is just like a garage essentially right now. But um, okay. we are working on renovating that space to create office space. Um, but for now, we just, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. everything's behind yeah. us. And <laughs> a lot of well, work. at least it's organized. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. I, mean, I was watching um, your chat with Leah and yeah. joking, and you guys were talking about. She's like, you get to see the pretty behind me, and I was Absolutely. like, it's yeah. the same for all of us. Yeah. It's chaos, yeah. and then it's like this one little moment where I put all the samples, you know. So yeah. it's. But I think when we are artists, you know, you just can go crazy, I, and that's yeah. okay. I agree. Definitely. And I if there is no mess. You know, there is no then nothing good is happening. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> totally. Exactly. I tend to like make a big mess and then clean it all up and then make a big mess again. But yeah, a, a big mess is definitely a part of the creative process. Yeah. For sure. But then, like, and we both have that. Like, we need to like bring it back, you know, like and like get it kind of organized yeah. and then start again. <sighs> yeah. So you create a lot of patterns. So what do you sell your creations once we are done with the patterns? What do you do with them? Um, so that's a part of our balance too. Allie makes a lot of um, the pieces that we sell mm -hmm. as finished goods. Um, okay. We and were... I make a lot of stuff like testing the patterns as she's creating them. You yeah. know, like she as she's like working stuff out, she'll pass the patterns along to me to kind of test them. And I see. Yeah, that's yeah. good. So we <laughs> had we we started primarily selling finished goods, mm -hmm. um, and it was probably about two years of that before we decided to venture into actually publishing any of the patterns. Okay. Um, yeah. Our, our first like most successful pattern that like caught everyone's attention as we were making finished products was our Junie bobble rainbow blanket. Yeah. That was a pattern that Lindsay wrote that like people were going nuts for and we were making them, but they're crochet blankets and they take a long time to make mm -hmm. and we're making yeah. them as fast as we could. Mm -hmm. And the demand was coming often for people to want the pattern to make on their own. Right. And yeah. we were hesitant to like go into that space. And then when she designed our Boasaurus, like our Amigurami dinosaur, it was the same thing. People were super excited for the design. And a lot of our customers at that time were people who wanted to buy it. But we quickly saw we had a, almost half of the customers or people following us on Instagram were, were also makers, makers who yeah. wanted to make it themselves. I see. That's yeah. where we yeah. kind of finally decided to like take the leap to go into the pattern space was with our Boasaurus pattern. Yeah. Yeah. Do you so feel I, you made the right decision? Are you happy with this decision of making patterns for now? Absolutely, sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think, so when I very, very first started, I had actually designed the Knotted Lovies, but I'd made them in cotton. Mm -hmm. And so they were part of, like, my initial, like, launch of our mm -hmm. um, yeah. Etsy shop. And like Ali said, with the rainbow blanket, that was the rainbow blanket, the rainbow bonnet, the Lovies, and they all... Um, sold well and people were excited about them, but we had just like a viral sort of share with a, um, with an, I guess like an Instagram influencer that happened to share the rainbow blanket. So then that one just took off so big that we almost just on like a bandwidth and time mm -hmm. sort of put other patterns on the back burner because we were getting so much demand for the blankets. We couldn't make it all. Right. Yes, um, that's a lot. And so the, when we reintroduced, like Ali said, the Boasaurus, it was the patterns that we'd had in the shop originally, but we tried it in the new yarn, in the blanket yarn, which obviously made it bigger and just more of a statement piece than when we had originally made them in the cotton and they were smaller. And that really took off again. And we, we struggled and wavered back and forth between whether we we hadn't set out to be pattern designers right. per se and selling the finished or the patterns. Um, and so we, we didn't have that mindset. So it was kind of hard for us to get to the place to say, okay, what is the opportunity? Is there really like a market and a place to be selling our patterns versus, you know, we, we have this demand for the finished goods, but mm -hmm. we just couldn't know. Like if you hit on something big in crochet, one person can't crochet, you know, like yeah. 
And it almost takes away from the special handmade of it when you're trying to suddenly like mass produce in a way. Yeah. Before we talked, before we fully like decided to release the pattern, we looked into the possibility of producing our goods, like taking our patterns like to Peru oh, and yes. working like, you know, mm-hmm. like with communities that have like do a lot of like handmade goods and mm-hmm. seeing if there's a possibility to produce the items. And but then COVID yeah. <laughs> and oh, we were, okay. you know, kind of happy that we hadn't, we, we had some legs there, but happy that we hadn't proceeded with them because sure. it may have almost been crippling to our business in that mm. time. Like, you know, it was crippling to a lot of large companies that were doing manufacturing. So I can't imagine it was like a small company if yes, we like, I would have been. in the manufacturing, but, mm-hmm. um, but so we did finally decide like the leap of faith. And like you said, did we think it was a good idea? I think ultimately, yes. Like we feel like we've, we've always sort of operated from a place of we'll take like when an opportunity presents itself, we'll like consider and like take the next step. So it wasn't necessarily like the plan for the business to go the right. direction of pattern design, but we sort of took that leap of faith and now it's completely pivoted the business to primarily be pattern design. Mm-hmm. But it was a good pivot because we were reaching a place of like burnout making the same Absolutely. thing. Yeah. Um, and not ever being able to meet the demand. And creative frustration on my end because yeah. I had tons of ideas, but yeah. feeling like, well, I just can't had to work on a new idea because thing. we have 12 blanket orders to fill, you know? And um, it's allowed us to really like, like invigorate that piece, the creative piece and sort of like put out more. And it's, we've built like an amazing community now of makers. And totally. it's, we haven't, I don't, I feel like prior to releasing the patterns, we had a following on Instagram, you know, and social mm-hmm. media. And once we release the patterns, that's when we started to build a community. And that yeah. piece, yeah. you know, like going, crossing over into that and building the community, like is definitely the most invaluable part of, of the pattern piece. You know, it, like it meets the demand and that's wonderful. Mm-hmm. But like now we just have this community of people. Absolutely. Yeah. I was about to ask you that because you have 70,000 followers on Instagram. Do you believe he it's necessary to grow a business to have a social media community or do you think you can do it without it? Um, I think it depends. Like in our case, in our business, I absolutely think um, having the social media community helps a huge piece of it is like we create a pattern. If we have lots of makers excited Mm -hmm. and making that pattern, then they have communities of people who see it. Mm -hmm. Um, and then want to say, hey, I crochet, like, where did that pattern come from? And so from that standpoint of getting more customers um, and more people engaged with the making, mm-hmm. I think one of the most special pieces about becoming pattern designers and selling it that way instead of a finished good is the crochet community is made up a lot of makers who want to have like a shop, but there's also just tons and tons of hobby my grandmother crochets, yeah. my sister crochets, my mm-hmm. aunt crochets. There's just a huge community of people who um, they're not trying to make them and sell them as finished goods necessarily. They're just yeah. like, my grandson is coming and I would, how special that I can, like, we could buy him that dinosaur yeah. and he could have that and it'd be amazing. But also like grandma could make it. And then I can say like, grandma made you this dinosaur, you know? And like, as that piece is like really special and like heirloom in your family, it's not only because it's a beautiful handmade piece, but it was like a beautiful handmade piece from your Mm -hmm. family member, you know? Um, And so I think that, I think, I, I think the, the social media piece too, I don't think, and especially again with the community piece that we've seen, I don't think the quantity of people and growing the business in terms of like being focused on growing quantity is what's important. Sure. But using social media to build community is huge because like Lindsay said, like when we have a new pattern coming and we send that out to our pattern testers who are the people that, you know, like who we work with all the time, you know, like we support their designs, they support our designs, like we yeah. really well connect with each other. When they're testing our stuff and they're sharing it to their stories, there's people in their community who see and that just grows from there. And it's, totally. yeah. yeah. And it, I think it's like really special to us because we actually do get to see what people make. You yeah. know, that yes. piece of the social yeah. media, Yeah, it's not even so much, um, like our own personal social media as it is, it's a way for, again, other shops, other makers, or just other hobby crocheters to share and show mm-hmm. us what they've made from the pattern. And like, it never ceases to amaze me um, how everyone can be so different. Yeah, that is Because cool. 
you know, it, it, you can want to make the colors exactly the way we have it in the pattern photo, but so many people seem to just get like their, let their imagination run wild with what colors or like even something like the dinosaurs have like rainbow spikes. So it's, you know, lots of different color combos, but something like a cow where you might think everyone's going to be like black and white cow, black and white cow. The creativity Mm -hmm. that we see from people using the different variegated yarns or making a yellow sunshine cow or Mm -hmm. making a rainbow cow. And, um, it's, that's like without social media, how would we, you know, how would we see and kind of get that feedback of like everyone else's amazing creativity. So definitely. And that drives our creativity as well. You know, like it just, yeah. True. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. (laughs) So I, you were, you work with each other all day long. Do you still see each other on your personal, uh, personal life? Or do sometimes do you need to take a break? (laughs) So we have seven kids between the two of us. Okay. (laughs) Allie has three, um, three little girls. I have three girls and a boy. Okay. And they're all pretty much like boom, 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 boom. Like Allie's oldest is a little older than the rest, but then like the rest of them are kind of like, a year apart, a year apart, all, a year apart. All three apart. of her girls and two of my girls are all at the same elementary school this year. Oh, yeah. so, like, at least I, it's very practical. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, at school drop-off this morning. I'm dropping yeah. off my kids. She's walking by with her kids. We meet up, you know, if, if like, there's a work day where, like, we each kind of work from our own space, sometimes I'll be like, all right, I'll meet you at drop-off, and I'll bring you that yarn, or I'll bring, you know, like, yeah. yes. show me what you were working on. and yeah. Totally. And we, this is just, like, a little anecdotal, but we always laugh because – we are two of four kids. Like we grew up in a family with four siblings and I'm the oldest. And then she's next after me. And yeah. And then we have a younger brother, younger sister. And, um, we're like not quite two years apart. Our parents love to be like, you fought all the time when you were a kid, which we did like siblings, but like they say it in a way that it's like, Sometimes my dad's like, I just never thought you would get along. I like sometimes (laughs) he (laughs) looks at us like doing this and we were getting along for a long time before we started doing business together, of sure, course. Okay. But it's just sort of funny because sometimes our parents are like, you're running a whole business together. Like you're, but you know, we like in that with our kids and with our business and all of it, I think um, it just, we were already supporting each other in mm-hmm. a way. And it's just like allows us to further like and ingrain and support one another. Um, so yes. We see each other at our <laughs> I mean, Do you um, do you always talk about business outside of work, or sometimes you you say like, okay, we need a break. Let's let's stop talking about the business. No, I think it's a mix. Yeah. we also talk about personal stuff, stuff inside of work. Time, totally. so. it, what starts as like a business call turns into like a personal, and totally. then comes back around again to the and okay, yeah. but, but but we do need to work on the pattern. So what is the totally. yeah, let's focus? And it. It's like a blessing and a curse yeah. and probably even more so on my end than Allie's is like inspiration strikes at nine o'clock at night. I need to tell you the thing I thought about, you right. know, and it's like <laughs> probably could be like this could wait till tomorrow, but I'll forget if it waits till tomorrow. So Definitely. there's a lot of like, she's like, I'm going to tell you don't have to answer when it comes yeah. at one o'clock in the morning, <laughs> but I did have to send it to you and you can look at it in the morning. <laughs> but totally. Or there'll be a text that's like just saying this yeah. so you can remind me to like talk about it tomorrow. But like, right. What do you think about, <laughs> you know, sending something? I think that's amazing. Yeah. I think it, it, it's a beautiful story to see how two, two sisters, you know, can create such a successful business. For sure. Because a lot of people get along. Uh, I get along with my brother, but I don't, yeah. I don't think I could have a business <laughs> with him. Yeah. <laughs> and again, I think there's like, we just, um, like we said before, like kind of balance each other well mm-hmm. in sort of, having a very similar creative vision for what we see this could be and also a mindset that's just very Definitely. open to how like we're we have ideas we have like goals for where we're going but we're also both very open to saying like this opportunity came up let's try do this. we try it it's yeah. like does it and it doesn't mean we have to put something else we we're doing on the back burner does it mean we pivot away from something we thought was mm-hmm. you know like we said at one point we thought like trying to you know, we had some larger companies interested in carrying our crochet pieces, but we were like, we can't make that many. Yeah. Yes. And, and so what, you know, like, but 
so there's been different opportunities that we've also had to say were like not Mm -hmm. for us Mm -hmm. um or at least not for us in that moment right not maybe not right now or maybe not at all but yeah but I think you know with the ultimately like the ones that have come up like it's what I was saying is that we balance each other well so then you know where I maybe have strengths but shortcomings Allie can balance some of those out and there's like there's like an organizational piece that I could have all the creativity in the world, but it wouldn't happen if she didn't balance me out with like, yeah, this is what yeah. I need to get done. Right. This is it, you know, and then vice versa. Sometimes I'm like, this won't get done until I set a deadline. It's happening Friday. And she's like, okay, it's happening Guess Friday. And then we coming. like, yeah. and it happens Friday because yeah. it's like, I need to be like, when you get this done? But at, the, <laughs> but at the core of it, I think, yeah, like what she was saying, like our, our, our work ethic and also just our attitudes in general, just that like, I think we like read this thing recently that it's like, I think Elise Meyer said it, that everything is figure outable, you know? And if you have that attitude in life, you know, no matter what comes your way, whether it's a good thing, it's a good opportunity and we want to take it or something came that's kind of a curveball, we both always approach everything with like, well, it's figure outable. Nothing right. is ever like, well, that's it. That's the end. This is, we'll never, you know? So yeah. having and that same space totally. and that same attitude towards things. And generally sort of a... um things will work out the way they're supposed to, Definitely. you know? So yeah. like the good, yeah. it's like the timing was right and this happened. And sometimes the bad or the frustrating, it's sort of like, you know, we we tend to ultimately come through those and say like, oh, I see why this didn't happen the sure. way we thought yeah. it would. It or or that was frustrating or... and didn't happen the way we thought, but here's what we learned from it. Yeah, and... like when you wanted to produce in Peru and like COVID yeah. happened, you know? And a world yeah. pandemic happens. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Well. I mean – totally talk about silver linings right so yeah everything happened for a reason (laughs) and so you have something very exciting uh coming soon and can you please tell me what it is and explain everything yeah yeah so this is a example of one of those like we um we have a crochet book coming and we um it was one of those things that i think you know, we somewhat believe in like putting things out into the universe. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, if they're meant, they'll come back. And there was definitely a point in time where I was like, one day we'll put these patterns in a book. And Allie's like, okay, sounds good. That'd be so cool. But we didn't. um, And we had been self-publishing, obviously, all of our patterns just through our website and Etsy. So it's like, maybe that's something we'll do. Or, you know, like we feel like we have enough patterns or what would that be? Yeah. But definitely sort of the like, how cool would it be to Mm -hmm. like publish a book one day? And um and then we were fortunate enough to be approached by our publisher and sort of have the opportunity presented to us to us um and again it was one of those sort of having to discuss what that looked like for us Mm -hmm. what it was a huge labor of love and a Mm -hmm. lot of um time commitment to do and especially when it was like not like we weren't talking about it publicly yet you know like it meant like doing a lot of work behind the scenes Mm -hmm to put this yes. book project together, but like also trying to keep things running on the front end of Mama May Minis, keep yeah. sure. patterns and, and because it, you cannot post about it, right? Why? Of course. Right. Exactly. Yes. First, exactly. It was, um, not a secret, but like, yeah. it wasn't exactly, it wasn't public knowledge. And, um, you know, it is just the two of us. So sort of deciding for ourselves, like whether it was something we could take on and say, okay, like, there's only so much like bandwidth we have and time we have to commit to something. So while we were working Mm -hmm. on the book that was going to take away from some amount of um, presence or work that we could be, you know, putting out into our like current assortment of things. Mm -hmm. Um, But we were able to figure out a timeline for that. And, you know, there's the timeline like in the normal calendar year that we're all used to where there's like the really busy holiday season. And then there's the time of year when things go a little bit quieter. And so, um, you know, just making decisions about when, um, when we could afford to kind of pour our time into that project. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, and we, we got to work, we were really fortunate working with Page Street, um, that they had kind of approached us because they'd seen our, um, knotted lovies. And so they really wanted it to be what we wanted it to be Mm -hmm. conceptually. Definitely. Um, And so we had, you know, we had to get the concept approved and kind of go back and forth, but. And we went through a few different ideas as we like thought about what we would put in a book because they approached us, you know, having seen our work and liking what we did. But like Lindsay said, it was very open in terms of creativity. It was like, we want it to represent Mama May Minis. So like what you guys feel like, you know, 
yeah. you want to put out there. And so we ultimately, like, we went through different, like, what should the yarn be? What should, you know, is it animals? What yes. type of, is it specific animals? Is it, like, is totally. It, is it a mix of, at one point we talked about, would it have, like, some of our rainbow patterns in it? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. we ultimately just came back to this place of wanting it to feel like a very just classic collection. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we often des- describe like the way our patterns is like kind of like a modern heirloom crochet, something mm-hmm. that feels like Lindsay said, if, if your grandmother makes it for you or for your kid, you know, like it's classic and it, and it just feels like something special you want to keep forever, but has that like modern spin, you know, and design totally. to it. Yes. Totally. So, so when we ultimately landed on the concept of, and we decided to just do, it's a mix of some of our already existing, um, okay designs but also a bunch of new animals that we don't yet have in our assortment Mm -hmm. um we never saw them before sorry we never saw them before the new ones yeah exactly that's exciting actually even the existing designs like um we have like a bear we have our dinosaur we have um unicorn yeah our unicorn but we've also we've made um new features and adjustments and like and made yeah. parts of the patterns like yeah like making the patterns super simple in terms of trying to like limit the amount of sewing that was needed like we yeah. put like a lot of energy and effort into that and it's which I think ultimately like pushes our patterns forward in a really nice way and makes the projects super approachable for people yeah okay. totally we we um and we have in our patterns we some of the animals have three different sort of finish sizes you mm-hmm. could make so this book focuses completely on the middle of our three sizes, which is about a 15 to 17 inch finished animal. Okay. Um, and it's yeah. what we call our little size. Yeah. And okay. it is definitely like, it's like the perfect size. Like we released our mini collection at the end of last year. And those are, those like are like 12 inches, inch animals yeah. and those are great. They make up super fast. Yeah. We put out like right away, we, we released that as 18 animals immediately. Yeah. Um, but our little size is what the book animals are and it really is the perfect like bigger kids smaller kid they make up pretty quickly yeah (laughs) but yeah so they're all this sort of like finished size so what's the size of of this one this is called these are little and they're like approximately 15 inches Mm -hmm. oh that's so cute (laughs) it seems so light they are really yeah. so they're unstuffed mm-hmm. so they have the oh, lovey okay. fits. their body is unstuffed so there's no which has it's been like a lovey blanky style yeah and these are like the signature design that we've had kind of from the beginning like Lindsay was saying even all the way back to when she was first designing patterns the unstuffed body gives it that like blanky but also stuffed animal feel the knotted yes. legs has always been a signature of the mama made minis designs it's so cute <laughs> Thank you. but yeah and then um we took it as an opportunity to, to, I like to challenge myself in design to make it as simple for the maker, mm-hmm. but also not skimp on any details and just really, you know, giving it that sort of signature, very cute look. Yeah. Um, like when I design different animals, I definitely try to like design like the cute baby version of something, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but so, yeah, so the, all the patterns in the book, minimized sewing as much as possible and so a lot of the elements are all crocheted in place so Mm -hmm. that there's really limited um extra steps in Mm -hmm. the making yeah and there's a lot of techniques that we use across all of our patterns um the way that like the body is crocheted directly off of the head that helps like minimize sewing and the book really gave us the opportunity to like dive in and show more steps of like the maker process Mm -hmm. we have a section where we share like our favorite maker tips, like the specific way that like we like to yarn under, yarn over, mm-hmm. the way that we like to, you know, work our color changes and that kind of stuff. And then also like step-by-step photos of the different techniques that you use within the pattern just to help. So just, you, know, you can buy the book and just by reading everything you, you can, do you consider you can learn to crochet with a book? Somewhat. It, yeah. I wouldn't, I don't want anyone to think we're, it's a how to crochet book mm-hmm. per se, but we do show each of the stitches used. We show step-by-step yeah. step photo, um, you know, photo steps of each stitch. Okay. So the information is there. Um, and it utilizes, our designs utilize pretty much single and half double crochets. Yeah. With oh, the exception yeah. of like, um, you know, some things like using the back post only or the front post only or uh, making a bobble stitch, which we show how to do those. So. Mm-hmm. 
overall, the, the, the stitches you need to know aren't hyper complex. Yes, um, I hesitate ever to call it be made for a beginner because they're not necessarily designed for beginners. Mm-hmm. However, we've had a ton of beginners. We've, that's a fun part of our community too. We've seen yeah. a ton of people learn to crochet just to make our patterns. It's like and our then, favorite thing to hear when people are like, I didn't know how to crochet, but, but I had I, to do it. I, which is so I started. I had to make it. Yeah, totally. <laughs> or I, I came across your patterns. I love them. I don't know how to do it. Do you think we can do it? And we're like, absolutely, yeah. you can. Like That's what yeah. I always tell any beginner. They're like, are they beginner friendly? And I'm like, where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. If and, you want to do it, you yeah. can. And, and they are. They Like yeah. Lindsay said, the stitches are not particularly complicated. Yeah. And so in the book, anything that is kind of like slightly more involved, we've had the opportunity to like show a step-by-step way to, of, of doing that. And so. Totally. Yeah. How long was the, the process from, you say, the, the editing company, the, yeah, the editing company contacted you? How long was the process until the book is released? Um, so we started discussing the book concept with them in May of mm-hmm. 2021 or 22? 22. 22. Yeah, it was just about a year. Okay. We're about, is it about a year and a half? Because yeah. we're releasing in November. Yeah. Okay. And so we started talking to them too in June. So yeah, it must and have been we, like, like June kind of 22. we completed the book and handed everything over to our publisher in about May of this year. May yeah. to June of this year. So it was about... Well, the- the book was completed in January of this year as far as, like, we'd written everything. Right. Mm-hmm. And then, like, we'd written all the patterns. We'd written all of the content. That mm-hmm. was turned over early this year. But then there's a handful of month process in which you're having a technical editor, mm-hmm. obviously, because it's crochet. There's someone going through that technically knows mm-hmm. how to make and uh, read a pattern and help you with that piece. Um, and and then, regular editor who goes through exactly. just to read, you know, for grammar regular and spelling. Regular editing. So it's... Yeah. A good bit. It's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, actually, it seems a lot. We actually um, did all the photography for the book mm-hmm. as well. So uh, yourself, yes, yes, and yeah. not oh, only. Wow. Believe me, in any pattern writing, that's the bane of my existence. <laughs> is the part where we have to photograph the steps because yeah. you want to give people as much help and pot, you know, and the more photos and how you can take photos of the steps. But it always is the part that kind of feels like it's like. <laughs> you know so yeah. that was a huge undertaking was yeah. every one of those like how to stitches mm-hmm. you know the different making the parts um the different features of each there's 16 animals so 16 different you know so guys much that photograph. um that was all sort of post once we've turned over the, the content written and, yeah. yeah the content of the book then mm-hmm. we started with all of the photography mm-hmm. and then our editor and, and then the editing process exactly. and the yeah it was a lot. It was yeah. fun. Yeah. <laughs> there were moments where we were like, what did yeah. we sign up and, for? And we friends be like, oh, it's so great. And then your next book, and we're like, maybe. Oh, maybe. We'll see. We'll see. We're not Let's wait. Say, never say never. But, it, but yeah. it, it's like it's like when people say, like, you forget really quickly after you have a baby. Yeah, like, you for block sure. out. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, I'll have another baby. But right afterwards, you're like, what? Oh, my God. What did never I do? again. <laughs> <laughs> So when, when uh, what date will the book will released? November fourteenth. Okay, so, so we have to save the date. Yeah. And uh, where will it be uh, available to purchase? So um, it's actually available for pre order now. Um, okay. So you can pre order it now, and we have a link on our website to all of the places. Although you can actually request to order it from any bookstore. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. It's available on Amazon. It's available at Barnes and Noble. It's available on Target. Target. Um, internationally, I think we've heard maybe the most success is through Amazon, but mm-hmm. you can, it can be requested at any, like you can go to a local bookshop and request to have like pre-order a copy. Um, it will okay. also, it's going to be available as a print version and as a digital version as well. Yes. So if, People okay, it, that's, you know, that's a, great. A, exactly. You know, for Kindle or for their... Did you announce it to your community yet? We yes. have. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, totally. What was the answer? Um, people are really excited. Yeah. I feel like we, um, the hardest part for me was the timing. Like Ali said, we we were working on it for like a year and a half, but not talking about mm-hmm. it. So some of the patterns in there are really highly requested animals mm-hmm. that I kept being like, 
just wait, just wait. Just wait. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and of course we didn't want to release them prior to the book. And so I'm like sort of sitting on my hands a little bit, like, uh -huh, we have a fox. Yeah. But like it's coming. You He's like an elephant. Yes. Yeah. She's like, they're asking for a cow again. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, I know. He's it's coming. coming. He's coming. Um, so that was really finally being able to talk about it. Yeah. And then the like nerves and the imposter syndrome of like, by the time it comes, will anyone want that? You know, because we were having requests for certain things, you know, you have that moment sort of like, is it going to feel like old news? But I um, feel like that, not, yeah. that is, and again, with like going through different ideas and options for this book, I feel like what we release like is it will always be like a classic yeah. aesthetic that yeah. people associate with our brand. Yeah. Animals are always a lovable, wonderful, you know, thing yeah. that people like to make for their loved ones. Totally. So. And we chose to keep the color palette and mm -hmm. the color story within the book very um, sort of neutral and classic, mm -hmm. but yeah, really excited for everyone to get oh, their hands the on it part. <laughs> and like make their amazing versions of each mm -hmm. one and see like all of the, the creativity um, and the, exactly. the excitement so. that comes out of it. Yeah. Wow, that, that's super exciting. I can't wait to see. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for answering all of my questions. Is there is anything you want to add uh, before the end of the interview? Um, I don't think. I no. think, like Lindsay mentioned, if you're interested in the book, you know, we have a um, a page on our website. We have a little bit of a pre-order surprise um, for our community. So if people want to check out that that page of our website, um, you can see more details there. Yeah. And we're just excited to put it out there. Three weeks from yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, yes. I'm not sure when this will post, but right. three weeks from today. You'll post on the 11, I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Perfect. Yeah. Well, then three days. Yeah. If it's going up on the 11th, then three days. The book will be out on the 14th. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Lindsay and Ali, for being the, the guest on the Crochet Podcast. It was amazing talking to you. I wish you a lot of success for your book. Yeah, it's an amazing so concept. I'm sure it's going to be a huge success. And thank you so much for being there. Thank you Thanks for, for having, having us. <laughs> thank sure. you. Bye. Bye. If you like this episode, don't forget to leave a thumb up or five stars. It's really, really helpful more than you think. Don't forget to subscribe to have access to all the episodes of the Crochet Podcast. And I see you very, very soon. Bye bye.